When my daughter was in grade four, she was instructed to write about a planet of her choice. She chose Pluto. Alas, about 15 years later, the International Astronomical Union, or IAU, decided Pluto was no longer a full-fledged planet, partly because it's just one of a number of similarly sized objects in an area of our solar system called the Kuiper Belt. A newly drafted definition of the word planet limited the category to celestial bodies that a orbit around the sun and b have sufficient mass so as to pull themselves into a nearly round shape and c have quote cleared the neighborhood end quote around their orbits. Pluto failed the third criterion and so became a mere dwarf planet. The word moon may now be in for similar revisionism. It was announced this week that the IAU has recognized no fewer than 128 new official moons of Saturn, bringing that planet's total to 274 known moons. At some point, surely the word moon begins to lose its currency. When I was growing up, life was simpler. The National Hockey League had six teams, and all the planets had a reasonable number of moons. Jupiter led the way with 13, which increased to 16 in 1979 when the Voyager spacecraft passed by and took a look. At the time, Saturn came close with nine moons, though the Voyager science team then added a few more, and so the two gas giants were, for a time, neck and neck. Things then took off, and Saturn and Jupiter have both been adding moons by the dozen. By 2019, 82 moons of Saturn had been discovered versus 79 for Jupiter. Then, two years ago, Jupiter once again took the lead with 91 moons until later in 2023, a whopping 62 new moons of Saturn were discovered by the same group that recently added the 128 new moons, led by astronomer Edward Ashton at the Academia Sinca Institute of Astronomy and Astrophysics in Taipei, Taiwan. Based on observations made by Scott Shepard, an astronomer at the Carnegie Institute, Institution for Science in Washington, D.C. During this period, Jupiter added only another paltry four moons. As things now stand, Saturn has more moons than all the rest of the planets in our solar system combined, even adding in the single moon of Pluto, if one counts Pluto as a full planet, as I still do. Earth has one, Mars has two, Jupiter 95, Uranus 28 and Neptune 15, bringing the total non-Saturn moon tally to 143. But in attempting to visualize 274 separate moons orbiting a planet, it's worth considering that there are moons, and then there are moons. Not all are created equal. There are regular moons and irregular moons. Moons of the former type, of which Saturn has 24, orbit the planet in almost circular paths, roughly around its equatorial plane, and follow the same direction as the planet rotates. Irregular moons are farther out, with highly elliptical orbits that are inclined away from the equatorial plane. They're also smaller than regular moons, some only a few kilometers across. Some are so irregular as to orbit in a direction opposite to the planet's rotation. The distinction goes beyond celestial aesthetics. The regular moons likely formed around Saturn at the same time as Saturn itself coalesced. The irregular moons, on the other hand, were likely minor planets that were later, later captured by Saturn's gravity or broken shards of such planets that may have collided together after they were captured. For this reason, learning about the nature of these different moons can help us understand the evolutionary history of Saturn. Putting its many moons aside, Saturn is best known for its beautiful rings, which are composed of small chunks of ice and rock, pieces of comets and asteroids, and even nascent moons that were torn apart by the planet's intense gravity. Thus they share, in many cases, similar histories to those of the surviving irregular moons, which is to say that the study of these irregular moons can help us learn about the formation of Saturn's rings. But if the irregular moons that orbit Saturn are just medium-sized rocks, what really distinguishes them from the myriad smaller rocks that make up Saturn's rings? 
Would a ring inclusive analysis allow us to conclude that Saturn may have literally tens of thousands of moons? If so, surely the word moon would lose all meaning. As noted above, Pluto was demoted once it was discovered that there were numerous other Kuiper Belt objects, some of them larger than Pluto, to stop a runaway proliferation of planets, quote unquote, in the solar system. Something had to be done. So Pluto was tossed under the astronomical bus. Something similar may soon have to be done in regard to the word moon, although the IAU hasn't yet done it. After all, if we consider meter-sized objects as moons, Earth is known to have a few of these, and not all of them are made of rock. Humans have launched literally thousands of such objects into near-Earth orbits since the space race began in the 1950s. Should every discarded fuel tank and powered out satellite be part of the lunar family? If so, then the solar system's moon king is Earth. NASA defines moons as, quote, naturally forming bodies that orbit planets, end quote. A formulation that would exclude human-made astro junk. On the other hand, it would potentially include the uncountably numerous objects contained in Saturn's rings. And so such a definition would still be much broader than the one that most of us hold in our childhood imaginations. Something big enough for we humans to land on, as per the famous Frank Sinatra standard, walk on, the police, 1979, dance under, Van Morrison, 1970, wish upon, Billie Holiday, 1952, or perhaps even inhabit, REM, 1992. While none of these musical artists are astrophysicists, to my knowledge, members of the IAU would do well to take inspiration from their lyrics when they get around to refining the term moon. Not every moon needs to be as big as our own, of course, but at the very least, a human visitor shouldn't be able to pick it up and stick it in his pocket.